video is now about uh, the result discussion and uh, this is the chapter number four uh, sometimes people uh, uh, make thesis of five chapters first is introduction the second is literature review the third is materials and method and sometimes people call experimental method the fourth chapter is the result discussion and the fifth is the conclusion sometime if your data is lengthy and if you have too much data so people make result discussion three chapters so your thesis should be seven chapters okay so let's talk about uh, result discussion uh, this is the result discussion and uh, today we'll be make it very clear uh, in third chapter we use materials and methods uh, we talked about materials and methods now uh, in this chapter chapter four we use those materials and those techniques methods and we achieve something and now let's to discuss those results which we achieved used those materials and those methods this is very simple so in positive i just uh, synthesize multi functional tin oxide nanostructure as i explained before starting uh, the result discussion we must need to uh, talked about little bit about that chapter and that is the introduction this introduction is different than writing a review a review article or experimental paper this introduction is just briefly telling the readers that what i am going to describe in this chapter let's read this this chapter deals with synthesis of tin oxide nanoparticles and multifunctional nanoparticle in order to achieve high surface area and superior lighting harvesting property by controlling the annealing temperature we give very clear message we telling the readers that why we are synthesizing tin oxide nanoparticles and multifunctional nanoparticles and nanospheres in order to achieve high specific surface area and superior light harvesting properties how we are achieving these things by controlling the annealing temperature we are varying the temperatures the detail of synthesis has already been described in chapter 3 the how to synthesize these particles we explain hydrothermal techniques in third chapter and we give the reference here why we need to explain it here again and we say that go to section 3.2 the material thus synthesized when we synthesize the material then we make disensitized solar cell electrodes and that we already explain the method in 3.5 section and evaluate the performance the detail of material characteristics optical properties of the electrode develop and result of solar cell testing are described in this chapter now what we say we say that the detail of material characteristics when we uh, synthesize nanoparticles so those characterizations and their optical properties and electrodes and everything uh, we will describe in this chapter so let's see start so the first when we synthesize a material so uh, when we synthesize so we will do first the xrd and we want to know that whether the material we choose and we synthesize a particular nanostructure whether it is that material or not how we know we know from xrd because every material we have it have a specific xrd and that has a specific group so when we test those materials uh, using x-rays so it give us the information and when we compare the peaks of the xrd graphs so it tell us that that this is basically tin oxide this is titania this is carbon nanofibers whatever so this is the xrd and i'm not going to detail that uh, how to describe xrd i will make separate video but this is the simple things we just say three samples were synthesized at three temperatures we choose three temp temperature and three different sam samples and we label those symbol this this and this the xrd pattern is shown in this figure you see these are the these are the xrd pattern here and this is the two theta and this is the intensity here and these are the peaks so when we compare these peaks it is it was matching with the standard uh, uh, the standard uh, this card number this pile number 
and it is basically for uh, ten oxide rotile tetragonal oxide so this we confirm that our material is ten oxide we confirm that our material is basically ten oxide from from this xrd graphs okay and then we explain the crystallite size and full width half maxima of all these materials in the graph then after that we describe the morphological study the morphological study means that when we synthesize our nanostructures we want to know that whether it is nano rod whether it is nano fibers whether it is nano sphere whether it is uh, a flower shape whether it is a uh, nano tube or multiporous nano tube for that purpose we need to study its morphology and for that we need field emission scanning electron microscope so this is the structure of those you see so we can see that it consists of uh, some balls spheres and small small particles you see it is a mixture these are also hollow hollow nano particles this is the morphological study and this is the transmission electron microscope this is the detail analysis i will also make a separate video on this how to study this this is the electron diffraction it give a give us electron diffraction here this is the gas absorption study of the materials we want to know that whether the material have high surface area what is the pore size what is the volume distribution so this is that study now <coughs> now we when we study that our material is uh, ten oxide using xrd and we study the surface morphology and we study the gas adsorption properties now we make the electrodes and we also did the ecm of the electrode that what is the thickness in those kind of things and finally we also study their light scattering properties and finally when we study their, then we make the device photovoltaics from those materials you see and you we must need to link for example now we want to start this uh, photovoltaic characteristics of an exciting so we say to observe the performance of nanoparticles and multifunctional nanoparticles is a working electrode in dyson satire solar cell we just did the jv characteristics we did just did the solar cell uh, characterization to to test whether this materials uh, give performance or not or whether this material give high performance or low performance so this we draw here in the graph you see and these three different material give us uh, different fix here different curves and we also compare this with the standard p25 this is the standard one and this is these three are our material and finally we conclude this chapter and conclusion is very very interesting conclusion means basically that uh, tell the readers a big big things is i explain that uh, conclusion tell the reader the whole chapter but in a very very brief way for example uh, we tell the reader that uh, all the surface area is the crucial factor for photoionic material but we also require light scattering properties so if we uh, require uh, light scattering properties so we need to have a big big particles so this is we we just give the comparison of surface area here you see and we just tell the reader that this material have this surface area but the 200 material have the low surface area and when we test those uh, material in dye sensitized solar cell you see here so it gives four percent efficiency and this much current and finally we say that the overall performance of sno2 was lower than titania counterpart and you remember when we compare the titania is a standard so now we say that the sno2 was lower than titania uh, because of some reasons you see so this is Uh, the 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 conclusion part is basically uh, you tell the reader uh, the whole chapter in a very very brief and short form this is the this is the meaning of the conclusion because you conclude the chapter if i read your conclusion without reading the whole chapter so i get the idea of the whole chapter this is the main rationale behind writing conclusion thanks for watching